Welcome to BizTech's Health and Wellness Show, where we focus on equipping you with knowledge on health and wellness to help you to ensure a more productive and healthy life for yourself, your families, and your employees. Today, the conversation is about your heart, and in conjunction with World Heart Day and in partnership with KPJ Ampang Putri Specialist Hospital, we discuss the top 10 myths about cardiovascular disease. Now, to bring insights on this topic, we have Dr. Ika Faizura, consultant cardiologist at KPJ Ampang Putri Specialist Hospital. Now, Dr. Ika, welcome to the show. Hi, Brian. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, yes, hopefully we can debunk some of the myths about heart disease uh, tonight. Now, Dr. Ika, can we start by you giving us an overview of yourself, your training, as well as your specialty? Okay. Uh, my name is Dr. Ika. Um, I'm actually a cardiologist, consultant cardiologist. Uh, I work in KPJ Ampang Putri for the past six years. Uh, prior to that, I was in IJN uh, for about five years. Um, and I was in HUKM for about five years. And before that, I had the opportunity of working in Liverpool for five years after my graduation. So my specialty is actually cardiologist, but my passion would be heart failure. So uh, anybody who has failing heart out there, I am much uh, more excited uh, to heal broken heart. Let's see. Okay, and it's interesting that you did your training in Liverpool. I happen to be a Liverpool FC fan. MashaAllah. <laughs> now, uh, Dr. Ika, what we're going to do is, I want to make things a little bit more interesting and fun. Mm -hmm. what, we should, what we'll do is, we'll discuss cardiovascular disease okay. around 10 myths. All right. And I'm going to be using phrases that you probably hear all the time from people who uh, you speak to or your, your patients. Okay. I'm going to start with age. Now, have you heard this many times that, oh, I'm too young to worry about heart disease? I hear it many, many times, Brian. Uh, that is the thing. I mean, uh, our, our heart actually have arteries that supply oxygen and nutrient to the heart muscle. So these arteries actually started to block at when we are already in our second decade. So when we are in our 20s, it will start to block already. So that's why, I mean, at the very beginning, since we are young, we should try to uh, eat healthily, um, exercise, um, uh, prevent us from having, prevent us from having future heart attack. Because as you can see, um, the the arteries will start to block right from the beginning so if we don't look our heart properly we don't look after our artery properly then some of us might even have this uh, heart attack at a younger age and um so happened my youngest patient to have heart attack is actually an 18 year old boy oh my goodness uh, why is that was he overweight and perhaps had diabetes no no actually i think um Actually, we do not know exactly what's the cause of the blockage, but he actually has a blockage. He, has a, he had a heart attack. This is a boy who was like a javelin thrower. Uh, he was having, I was in HUKM at that time. So he was having a practice uh, in a nearby stadium. And before the warm-up, he already had chest pain. But then he proceeds with the warm-up and he actually collapsed. So ambulance men were there rushing, doing a CPR on him, managed to revive him, bring him back to the casualty. So when they did the ECG, the basic test, and they saw that, oh, there are changes that indicate that this boy had a heart attack. So uh, my friend who was an ED physician gave me a call and we were like, oh, uh, this is um, unusual. So he was already on a life support at that time. Blood pressure is crashing. So we thought that uh, we have no choice but bring him to the cath lab. So we bring him up to the cath lab and sure enough, one of the arteries, which is the right side, right coronary arteries is completely blocked. So we have to suck the debris, uh, balloon it up, open up the, the arteries and eventually uh, keep the heart pumping. And he survived that. So uh, Fantastic. Yeah, so that, 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 that is one of the um, uh, memories that I will always carry, remember for the rest of my career because he's such a young man, he's an athlete, uh, he might have taken, you know, um, 
uh, drugs or things like that that to boost his uh, stamina that might cause ruptures of the artery. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, anybody could have had heart attack at any time of the day. So furthermore, in Malaysia, Brian, we actually have heart disease a decade younger than our European counterpart. So when I was in, in Liverpool, generally people who are in ICU are above 60s. They are in their mid 60s, 70s. They are retirement age. But if you come to the ICU or CCU in Malaysia, you will see younger patients. I mean, last month, my youngest patient who have heart attack was only 40. So he's even younger than me. So my patient oh. now get younger and younger than me as I get older. So uh, he's completely look fine. Um, he's not overweight, but of course, he does not know that he has diabetes. So that's the thing. I mean, uh, we should know from the very beginning uh, our sugar level, our cholesterol level, our heart, uh, our blood pressure level, because all these are actually risks that will cause us to have heart disease at some point, whether we have it early, premature, or we have it later in our life. So one so of the things, as you really, just mentioned, really, is about uh, cholesterol, right? Thing. Yes, correct. Uh, Dr. Ika, can I ask you, because that's also a common thing. People say, oh, I don't need to have my cholesterol checked till I'm middle age. But actually, the American Heart Association recommends that you start checking your heart uh, cholesterol levels um, uh, at age 20 onwards every five years. Correct, correct. I, that's absolutely correct because we do not know that we have high cholesterol because it's not like, you know, we have a fall, you, had, you go cycling, you had a fall and fracture your arm. So it's like completely visible. But then high cholesterol is not visible at all. So you have to really check it. And studies have shown that people who have low cholesterol level right from the beginning, yeah, have much lower risk of having heart attack compared to people who only started to lower their cholesterol in their 40s. So that's why it's very important that we lower down our cholesterol right from the beginning. Now, the other thing is high blood pressure because a lot of people say, well, there will be warning signs if I have high blood pressure. But that's not strictly the case, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If you already have sign when you have high blood pressure, it means that you're already too late because your blood pressure will be like sky high to the roof. Your kidney will be damaged. So very, very important. And the thing with blood pressure is that even the teenagers can have high blood pressure. So what is that caused by in general? Okay, uh, it can, high blood pressure can be caused by essential high blood pressure which is um, uh, can happen in uh, teenagers but what we have to rule out is that other secondary causes such as hormonal imbalance um, cancer that can have a uh, growth that can have uh, cause somebody to have high blood pressure but I have seen nowadays a uh, much younger population in their teens or in their 20s who have essential hypertension meaning that their heart blood pressure high, not due to any other secondary causes, because anybody who have come to me with high blood pressure, I will have to check their kidney function, do the ultrasound, you know, do the full, full workout to make sure that I have ruled out all the secondary causes. But more and more younger people nowadays, especially now that they are hooked on to the computer, they are doing online uh, class, you know, when I look at my children's uh, laptop, their, their screen time is like five, six hours, Brian. So, you know, they hardly move. So, and also now food are easily accessible. Previously, they have good food. We either have to cook it ourselves or have to go out and buy it, you see? Yes. To pop. But nowadays, no, we just like on a click of a handphone and here they come, you know? So all that. And that is one of the things, uh, which is why you mentioned uh, uh, earlier that in Malaysia, we tend to have heart issues when we are much younger compared to the yes. West. Because I think Malaysia, studies have shown in Asia, we are the most obese population. Correct, correct, correct. And that's probably due to the great food that we have. Yes, great food, uh, wealth, I must say. Uh, and actually, the food in Malaysia is quite cheap. It's cheap. It's easily available. Like, you know, before PKP is almost 24 hours. Correct. Now, yeah. can I ask you, because you, we keep talking about diabetes is a, is a recurring theme. 
Correct. Uh, and has some causal effects with heart disease. But a lot of people may say, well, as long as I take my medication for diabetes, I shouldn't have a problem with heart, heart issues. That's a myth, isn't it? Okay. Um, diabetes per se is actually one of the major risk factors of somebody who to have heart disease. So if you take medication, uh, it doesn't, if, and if you don't look after yourself, meaning that you don't exercise, you don't control your diet, uh, you eat all those sugary, fatty food, then your, your sugar level will be high despite whether you're on insulin or on your medication. So your sugar level won't be controlled. So, so these people who have not changed their lifestyle when they have already have diabetes have higher risk because first their diabetes will be uncontrolled. If they eat all those unhealthy food, they will be obese. Okay, so if they're smoking, so they have already have three risk factors, Brian, to, to have heart disease. So, so those people who actually have diabetes have to be extra, extra careful because they are at much, much higher risk compared to other people who have normal sugar level. Now, how about, um, you know, people talk about family history. I've got heart disease. There's uh, nothing I can do to prevent it. Is that strictly the case? No, uh, actually, one of the reasons why I uh, take the example myself, because I actually, uh, those people who are at risk, Brian, because my father had a heart attack and a stroke at the age of 42. So I remember oh, at yeah, that time, really yeah, that. yes, that's, that's the, the, the point whereby I know that I have to be a doctor. And if I'm good enough, I have to be a cardiologist because he had a heart attack right in front of me. And I actually see that he's, you know, the cardiac rhythm when he was in, mm -hmm. he was in ICU, it was actually showing a flat line for a short while. Oh and I felt completely hopeless, helpless at that time. And uh, yes, doctor come uh, immediately. But then, you know, seeing that in front of your eyes, my father had a stroke first. Then a month later, he had a heart attack. All his brother's sisters had a heart attack and stroke at such a young age. My uncle had a bypass, had a stand put in, had a heart attack. So they are all uh, genetically uh, susceptible to, to heart disease. So I'm pretty sure I carry half of the gene. So that's oh, yeah. why uh, right from the beginning, I try my best to eat healthily, uh, to um, to do exercise. In fact, I have started my children from right the very young age to to uh, eat healthily, to exercise regularly. So we go out on excursion, uh, so that I wanted to, to train them right from the beginning because I know I will be passing my gene to them. So you know we do excursion like hiking, cycling, kickboxing. You know with my kids so that. I wanted to, to reduce our risk factor of having heart disease in the future. I don't well, exercise that, is a big issue, right? I think exercise, a lot of people, food is a big issue. And, and what is the minimum sort of exercise that is required for weeks? So from an American context, from what my research tells me, American Heart Association says you need two and a half hours of moderate intensity level per week That's for all. your overall health. In Correct. our Malaysian context, what do you recommend? I would recommend the same. Uh, in fact, I would to recommend to anyone out there, please get yourself a smartwatch. Um, I found that it's very, very good because it will uh, calculate my heartbeat, uh, uh, my time of the exercise that I need. So we need at least 150 minutes of exercise per week, Brian. Okay. So that means if you exercise five times a week, you have to exercise at least 30 minutes each time. So actually, that's not a lot of time, you know. Okay, and that could uh, mean, and, and that's a, for, for busy people like us, that could easily mean just a half an hour brisk morning walk. Correct. Half of an hour brisk morning walk or half an hour of just, um, you know, uh, going through the YouTube. There's plenty of YouTube exercise for half an hour. So you just have to choose uh, somebody good looking. Uh, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, so the half an hour would be a breeze. So now, one of the things with is um, uh, 
with heart attacks is actually the fact that sometimes you may have a mild heart attack and not even realize it. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, that, that's why a heart attack is always called silent killer because it can kill you before you know it. Um, especially so, right, if somebody who have, have diabetes. So diabetes actually switch off the, uh, the, uh, our sensory of a pain sensation when you have a, a chest pain. So that's why uh, some diabetic people do not realize that they have actually had a heart attack and they only seek treatment afterwards when they, they are too breathless that they cannot breathe. They cannot even walk for a few steps. So that's when, when they come to us, it's already too late. A few years ago, I got this cyclist. Uh, he's also like you, who's like long term, uh, long distance cycling. Uh, at that time, there was no PKP. He can still cycle in Lata. You know the Lata Highway. Yes, Lata. Yeah. Uh, the past there is hundred kilometers, right? Yes. So he actually cycled that two weeks before he actually had attack. So he was super fit. Uh, he smoked occasionally. So he started to have the chest pain on Saturday morning. Went to the GP. Um, uh, but then it was diagnosed as heartburn because, okay. you know, the tummy pain as well. So that's the thing with a heart attack. You, some of the patients do not represent with a clear cut, you know, textbook uh, symptom of chest pain, you know, crushing chest pain. So he was more like, you know, abdominal pain, read it to the chest and neck. So on Saturday morning, the doctor thought that he actually had the gastritis, so gave him all the gastric medication. And of okay. course, because okay. he has heart attack, this symptom does not go away. So he eventually walked to our emergency department on Monday afternoon. Wow, so two days later. Yes, two days later. So um, in heart attack, we can see evolution of the um, what say, uh, the, the, the investigation that we do, such as ECG. So I can tell from the ECG, uh, it correlates with what his, um, his history, you see, he was telling me that he has chest pain on Saturday morning. So his ECG changes indicate that the heart attack was not fresh. It's not acute. It has been going on for a few days. So when he come to me, uh, I quickly bring him to emergency, uh, to our cath lab, coronary artery um, uh, lab, where we do the angiogram. So immediately, right that afternoon, do the angiogram, stabilize him. Uh, it was uh, a horrific journey because he came already too late. So we have to put a balloon pump. We have to put a tube in his mouth because his lung was flooded by the time he come and see me. His kidney packed in. We have to dialyze him. But slowly, eventually, after I think three weeks in ICU, he gradually get better uh, and was able to be discharged. But that's the thing, Brian, I want to emphasize. The whole process was so traumatic, uh, so distressing, not only to me, of course to him, but also to his family. He got young children who come waiting in the, in the ICU every day, you know, praying for him. Uh, but this whole process actually can be minimized into just one or two days. So let's say he come and see me two weeks before he had actually had a heart attack. You know, I he come and do screening. We do a treadmill. There is some changes. We do elective angiogram, stand his arteries. He will come in today. We'll do his procedure tomorrow. And the next day he would have gone home. And what and is the recovery have, period for something like that? So you put a stent in there and how long does that take to recover from? Okay, let's say if he has, uh, he, he if it's just a walk-in elective procedure, recovery period is just within a few weeks, you know? I see. Of course, okay. if they are a marathon runner, I would ask them not to go immediately on a marathon. <laughs> okay. I would say like gradually, please, after a few weeks, five kilo first. And then 10 kilo, you know, something like that, 15. And before, before you, you know, maybe a month before you take it to like 40 kilos. But if somebody had a heart attack, it means that he, his heart is already damaged. So the heart, the artery is already blocked 100%. So what I'm trying to do or a doctor trying to do at that time would just damage control. So that's what I want to emphasize, I you, Brian, is that we must do screening must do screening early to look at the blood, 
we must do our ECG, we must do our stress test. And if you are like me, who have high risk and already past your forties, I'm not. I'm not going to uh, divulge <laughs> twice my age. But once you reach forties, you know, you if you're high risk, you should really consider to do something what we call CT coronary angiogram. It is completely uh, non-invasive. You can do it like you come in the morning at nine o'clock. By ten, eleven, you have finished. Um, so, Doc, if I want to go to, let's say I want to get the screening. So I go to your, I, I call the hospital. I, I call KPG Ampang Putri. I, I make an appointment. How long do I have to wait uh, before I get uh, a screen? I mean, in in private setting, Brian. Uh -huh. You know, you can get it almost immediately. I see. So I can turn up at the hospital because yeah. you know, we all, our audience is a very busy audience, you know, with uh, yeah. professionals. So I turn up in the morning and I'll say, look, can you, can I uh, do a screening yes. today? And I can just get that sorted out. How long yes. does the oh, procedure okay. take? Okay, it depends on what sort of screening that you want to do, okay? So blood test, you must make sure that you have actually fasted for at least eight hours to get the proper accurate reading of your sugar level, cholesterol level. Uh, for ECG and stress test, immediately, as long as you, you're, you don't come in with two empty stomach, you feel, you're fit and you do not have temperature, that, yeah, you can do it almost immediately for the stress test, provided that you are upper, uh, properly attire. But of course, even though if you don't, I mean, we have scrub that we can uh, land you to, to do the stress test. And of course, CT scan, you have to be fasted for at least five hours beforehand. And if your heart rate is well controlled, it almost can be done immediately. But if you are like tend to have a higher heart rate, because some of us like to drink lots of coffee, Brian, yes. coffee, tea, all those caffeinated drinks. So of course, our heart rate will be higher than, than normal. So in a CT scan, we want the heartbeat to be a bit lower, about 60 or 70 and below for us to have a much better quality picture so that the doctors can interpret the picture properly. So CT scan, you have to be a bit more prepared. But still, you know, if you come in the morning, if you already had your breakfast, you know, you just uh, hang around for another four hours, five hours, you know. In the meantime, you can still do other things like, you know, your time would not be wasted. You'll be doing blood tests, ECG and things like that. You can go and uh, go back and rest first or do whatever online work that you have to do. And when your five hours come, uh, then we can easily do the CT scan. But provided your heartbeat is settled. So that's the thing with CT scan, your heartbeat must be settled. Uh, about half an hour before you actually do the procedure, I always tell my patient, don't open your switch on your phone, don't read magazine, don't talk to your wife, okay. don't, take, don't go and wink at the nurses or chit chat with the nurses, <laughs> yeah. close your eyes and meditate so that your heartbeat will slow down so that we can do the CT scan as soon as possible. Now, it's been a fascinating and very informative uh, session, Dr. Ika. But before we leave, could you leave us with some final nuggets of good advice uh, before we end the show? Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, advise to all the Malaysians out there, please enjoy your life, but enjoy your life in a healthy manner. Meaning that you have to have a good sleep, okay? A good rest. Um, be happy, eat healthily. It does not mean that beef or chicken is unhealthy. It's how you cook the beef and the chicken that's more important. So let's say you want to have a beef. If you have a roast beef without all those trimming, it's a healthy meal. And also remember healthy meals such as um, avocados or olive oil are important in our diet. So it's also remember... Um, Oily fish is also very important. So those are uh, unsaturated fats that is useful to our heart. And also, um, last but not least, please exercise. Uh, uh, put aside some time of your, of your hours in the day to actually just do something that is useful for you. Once you start exercising, do it regularly, do it your friends, we do it your family, then you will change your outlook altogether and hopefully 
you can look after your heart and your heart will stay healthy as long as possible. Dr. Eka, thank you for taking your time to be on the show. Well, most of it. Thanks for inviting me. Now, I'm Brian Fernandez, and we've been speaking to Dr. Ika Faizura, consultant cardiologist at KPJ Ambang Putri Specialist Hospital, on a special edition of BizTech's health and wellness show in conjunction with World Heart Day. This video will be on our various platforms as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thanks again for tuning in. Thank you.